Hello all and welcome back. In this section we're going to talk about different types of muscle contraction. Following this, I'd like you to be able to distinguish isometric and isotonic contractions, describe muscle tone and reflexive muscle contraction, and distinguish a prime mover, antagonist, fixator, and synergist. There are two main types of contraction based on whether or not the muscle changes in length. Isometric contraction is important for stability. and many sarcomeres are contracting, but on the whole, the muscle does not change in length, does not shorten. Isotonic contractions do change in length. They either shorten, like in concentric contraction when you pick something up, or lengthen in eccentric contraction when you put something back down. I want you to think back to the last time that you fell asleep in an upright position. Likely, it was somewhere in public, like on a plane, or in a bus, or maybe in lecture. Other than eyes being closed, which could signal some extreme concentration, what other clues do we see to know that someone is falling asleep? One thing we'll note is their mouth is opening and their head starts bobbing around. Now, are we constantly thinking about keeping our mouth closed and keeping our head upright when we're awake? No, and what helps us do that? That will be muscle tone. So our muscles of posture, for instance, are always contracting, not enough to produce any movement, but enough to keep our head upright. What other muscles might need some consistent contraction? Sphincters like in the pelvic floor, seen in this image. One other type of contraction you talked about a lot with Dr. Sullivan in the neuro sequence. A sensory neuron to the spinal cord says, hey, that's hot, and a motor neuron triggers the appropriate muscles to move your hand off that stove, all before this reaches your consciousness. Now, as we talk about muscle actions, keep in mind that these muscles do not function one at a time. So each movement requires a complex of muscles performing different types of contractions. In this image, we can see a Navy service person casually exercising on the side of a boat. Perhaps when you were in physical education growing up, you did the presidential fitness test where you were told to try to do a pull-up. Can anyone actually do a pull-up? I suppose yes, <laughs> but let's talk about what all is going on during this crazy hard and crazy complex movement. You might think, oh, my arm muscles are doing things, right? But in reality, there's so much more going on. Let's talk through some of the muscle groups that are contracting and think about what types of contraction are happening during a pull-up. So. Your fingers are flexing, your elbows are flexing, and shoulders extend as you pull yourself up toward a bar. So for each of these actions, one muscle will be the prime mover, doing strong concentric contraction. In the case of a pull-up, the latissimus dorsi is a big one. But at the same time, the antagonist muscles that do the opposite actions to the prime movers are eccentrically contracting to stabilize the movement. Now, in order to pull the body up in one unit, muscles stabilize the shoulders, the trunk, the hips, the lower limbs, and these are all isometrically contraction, contracting, and they're known as fixators. Other muscles contribute secondarily through synergistic movements, either supporting the prime mover directly or stabilizing a more proximal joint. An example here would be at the wrist during this pull-up. So do this with me, make a fist and feel your grip. Now flex your wrist and make a fist again. Are you feeling the same strength in that wrist? Probably not. The muscles that flex the fingers also flex the wrists. However, with a synergistic fixator, the wrists are kept in extension to increase the power behind the grip. Oof! 
So all of that is to say it's definitely more complex than it seems on the surface. And our bodies are pretty amazing for how much we can do without even thinking about it. All right, so let's go back to individual muscle movements. I'd like you to predict the action of these four muscles based on the attachments given to you and the images you can see here. So write out an action in which general joint or bone that it's acting on. All right, are you ready to talk about it? So the first muscle is on the back. We can see it's deeper. It attaches here to vertebrae, more proximally, and to the scapulae, distally. So if these attachment points are coming closer together as this muscle shortens in a typical concentric contraction, what is happening? We're gonna find that that scapula is moving and the scapula will move kind of in a posterior direction toward the vertebral column. Do you remember an action that brings that scapula closer to the midline? That is called retraction. So squeezing your shoulder blades back together. Now, what was the opposite of retraction? That's called protraction. Another thing to note here, these muscles are called the rhomboid muscles based on their rhombus shape. Okay, so what about the next one? We see an attachment to the humerus here and also to the ulna. So which bone would likely move in this case? So we'll see the ulna and that leads to which action again as this muscle shortens. So that action will be flexion at the elbow. or the arm. And this here is the brachialis muscle, named for where it is within the arm. The next one attaches to the pubis, part of the pelvic girdle there, and to the femur. So shortening here, we would find an action where the femur comes closer to the midline. So what action is that? Adduction of the hip. You can also say adduction of the thigh. This cool muscle right here is named adductor longus. Nice name, isn't it? Now the last one here attaches to the tibia and the fibula and then also to the heel bone here, the calcaneus. Shortening here, which direction do you think those toes are going? If they're going to point toward the ground, you'll see that's called plantar flexion and that's another way to think of it is ballerina toes. But we'll talk about all these individual muscles when we get to the regional anatomy. And thank you for your attention through this video. Well, this brings us to the end of the videos for today about the joints and the muscular system and the end of our systems-based lectures. So from here on out, we're going to look at musculoskeletal anatomy by region of the body, starting out with the head. So please post questions on Piazza if anything is unclear and come on over to office hours to talk things out or ask any questions. Have a great rest of your day.